what you're looking at here is a value village find. It is a Lenovo R60E ThinkPad. Now, the interesting thing about this is it says IBM ThinkPad. So this is the transition period between Lenovo buying out IBM because IBM didn't want to bother with consumer grade laptops. So if we look here, oh, let me just see if I can up the brightness. Here we go. There we are. You can actually see what the hell's going on here. Okay, sorry for the little shaky cam. All right. <clears throat> so there it is. R60E. So <clears throat> if you ever buy one of these things from Value Village, and this one isn't bad because it actually has a Core 2 Duo in it. You know, so it's a bit better than some. It doesn't have the trackpad, but it's got the, uh, whatever the hell they call it, the little pointer device thing here. So that's cool. If you ever buy one of these, though, what you're going to encounter is the joy of trying to find drivers for it. So if you are interested in finding out what drivers you need, they're right here. These are them. And I'm about to post these to archive.org and I'll put a link in the posted video. The primary drivers you need are the ACPI driver. That'll clear the um, device manager. It'll show like an unknown device or whatever. So you'll need that driver. And um, if you want to get audio going, you need a hotkey feature driver. Um, you'll need definitely that. So I have two of them here and some notes on um, the Vista minimum uh, driver updates information that you'll need. So this will all be posted to um, archive.org for those who might find one of these laptops, say at a um, thrift store or something. Um, it's a decent um, system, not awesome, okay, not awesome. It's a transitional uh, laptop between sort of the XP era and Vista. I have it running Vista. I have no problem with Vista. Vista is essentially Windows 7, but, you know, the Windows 7 is like a, you could say like a um, upgrade, up, uh, update. They wouldn't, wouldn't have renamed it if it wasn't having such trouble. But essentially here it is. Um, it's running Vista Ultimate in this case. But, you know, the, the actual specs aren't bad for a system like this. Of course, always the big issue is the the graphics of a system like this. You'll always encounter the graphics being the big um, downfall in the system. I've put I've upgraded it um, to a total of two gigabytes of memory. It's running a 32-bit operating system. Um, there's the CPU information if, for those who are interested. But anyhow, it's running Service Pass, Service Pack 2, and I find it works great. But the big problem was I couldn't get the sound to work. And I looked all over the place. And what it came down to was I needed to install the hotkey software. Now, why would hotkey and sound have any, what would they have anything to do with each other? Well, it turns out, if you want to get things like, for example, um, I don't know if I can do this with one finger. Nope, nope, okay, hang on. Let's see, how am I gonna do this? This is the tricky part. I gotta somehow get, I need three arms. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this set. I can put, okay, I think I got, oh, I got it. Okay, well, I'm gonna show you something. See that? That is the on-screen display. That, requires the drivers so if you want um the on-screen display and you want sound you need 
what's known as hotkey feature drivers. If you do not install them, the sound simply doesn't work, as bizarre as that sounds. But after a hell of a lot of work, I got it working, as you can hear. So, warning to those buying a system like this, trust me, you want to install the hotkey drivers, not just the sound, the, um, the audio drivers, which is like a, what is it? Max sound max. Is that what it is? Uh, anyway, you just don't want to just install that. You want to install the hotkey feature drivers. Otherwise you're fucked. So that's just a FYI for anybody with a system like this, um, doing sort of a public service announcement for the poor people out there who buy a system like this from Value Village and think, oh, I'll just install, you know, the audio drivers. I won't worry about all this other junk. Nope, don't do it. Believe me, you want to install certain drivers that seem to be, like, unrelated to, you know, what you would think. But, hey, these are the ones you want. Now, some of these drivers are unnecessary. Like, for example, the toolkit, or toolbox, rather, which is PC Doctor. That's sort of like a diagnostic program. You don't really need that. And the track point and the uh, asset management, you certainly don't need that. Um, you don't need the, the keyboard customization. Power management's nice because you can actually see your, you know, your... Um, your um, battery percentage, but it's not necessary. You could work without it. Um, this is nice, this this little feature here, which is, you know, that little uh, track point. That would be your, uh, what is it called? A track point 2012 driver that you can see there. That one's worth getting um, and installing. Keyboard customization, well, unless you're going to remap some keys or something like that, no big deal. Asset management or the asset tag thing, don't bother. I wouldn't bother installing it. I, I'm going to upload it, but I wouldn't bother with it. I, ins I install it and then uninstall it because who needs that? Um, but if you're like trying to asset tag your ancient laptop, that's important. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's, uh, those are the drivers you need. I'm going to post them up there, uh, onto archive.org for those out there who actually uh, have a system like this and actually who don't want to hunt them down by God. I was looking all over the place, finally found them. Um, scan, I'll scan them for malware, of course. Um, but, uh, hopefully this helps somebody out there. That's going to be it for now. Talk to you later.